This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is the most baffling product made by Master Lock. It's the Model 410 Lockout Tagout, or Lotto, padlock. Now, this is not designed to be a security device like most other padlocks. What it's designed to do is to be attached to the control mechanism, something like a, a switch, a power supply, a valve, of industrial machinery or equipment to ensure that it's not turned on while a worker is inside or in some sort of zone of danger. So we get away with the plastic lock body. We have a, a non-hardened six millimeter shackle, but the interesting part of these locks and what makes them so interesting is the core that's inside. This actually has a relatively robust core. It is a six pin core. It has a relatively paracentric keyway. It's one of the better ones that Master Lock makes. And this is full of security pins. Now I can't take this core out without breaking the lock body, but I do have another core that I've opened up for you. So you can take a look at what's inside. And you can see we have five spools and one lightly serrated pin. So pretty good pinning on these. And that makes them very good practice locks, particularly with the, with the paracentric keyway. It's probably my second favorite practice lock out there after the American Lock Model 1100. And I actually keep a carabiner full of these things for practicing. I'll take one of these with me, go to watch a movie, and just pick them open while I'm sitting there on the couch. So what we're gonna do is pick this guy open I'll show you how I approach them, and then I'm going to explain why this lock is the crux of the master lock paradox. So let's get this open. I usually use top of the keyway tension with a bent 40 thousandths pry bar, and I use my number seven hook in 18 thousandths. Now, all of these locks are pinned the exact same way with that lightly serrated pin in the number five slot. So that's always what you're going to want to hit first. You, of course, on the way back should probably check to make sure nothing else is binding. So we have one loose, two loose, three's loose, four, actually four's binding a bit. Got a little click out of him. Five, okay, let's get him set. We just dropped into a little bit of a false set. Let's go on to number six. Got, I think I just overset six. Let me release some tension. Okay, I think we got six set back to the beginning. Counter rotation on one, got him set. Counter rotation on two, got him set. Number three, counter rotation. Come on, number three. There we go, and got the lock open. So. I'm very used to picking these so I can get through them relatively quickly, but don't be deceived. They're actually pretty tricky locks to open up, and I know a lot of people who have a fair amount of trouble with them. Now, why is this lock the master lock paradox? Well, the issue is that this has one of the best cores that master lock makes in one of the worst bodies that master lock makes. And I'm not entirely sure why that might be. Now, I know some of you are thinking right off the bat, well, it's a lotto lock. You need a lot of different differs for the keys, so that's why they put the six pin core in there. But take this lock. It's the Master Lock 6835, another lock that Master Lock makes for lockout tagout purposes. It has a more secure aluminum lock body, it has a hardened shackle as opposed to the non hardened shackle. And it even has similar pinning in here with spools and one lightly serrated pin. However, this one only has five pins in it. There's another lock that Master Lock sells for lockout tagout purposes, and that is the number three. And this one has only four pins and no security pins in it. So it's not because this is a lotto lock that we have that, that pretty good core in there because Master Lock does make other lotto locks with cores that are significantly less robust. And now we can go straight through the Master Lock lineup. We have, for instance, this is a model M5. It's one of their more beefy laminated steel padlocks. 
And this one only has four pins and no security pins. So a relatively robust exterior. However, the core is nowhere near as good as the core on this little plastic lock. We can go up higher in the master lock lineup with the M15. This is a lock where they did almost everything right in building the lock body. It's an extremely strong lock, yet what we have for a core is a five pin core with no security pins. So we have the lock body they did everything right on and nothing right in the core. And then we have the lock body everything is done wrong on and everything right in the core. And we can move on to some of Master's higher end stuff. We have the 930 here. And this also usually has some spools in it, though I've found a few that have standard pins in them. And this again, only a five pin lock. Then we get the hardened version of that, the Pro Series model 6230. Same thing, all we get is a five pin lock. Even moving up to the M930, the Magnum version, again, five pins. We do have security pins in here, but still nowhere near this six pin lock. So that my friends is the crux of the master lock paradox. How did we get such a good core in such a terrible lock? And then at the same time, put such terrible cores in locks that are relatively robust. I'm sure I will go to my grave, never understanding that. So if you do have any questions or comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.